All right. Well, I've got two o'clock on, on my watch, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are recording this, so if you have any you know, co-workers who couldn't make it, uh, we'll, we'll be able to send this out after the fact. Um, but uh, thanks so much for being a part of this and joining us today. Uh, my name is Dylan Edgel, and I'm the Assistant Director of the Center for Community and Economic Development at UCA. Uh, and we are one of the few organizations who organize the community conversations. And we like to bring uh, you know, community and economic developers together over Zoom um, so we can kind of discuss uh, relevant issues and have kind of an open conversation uh, about uh, these issues facing our communities. Um, so I want to do a quick shout out to the ASU Delta Center, uh, the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, uh, and Intergy Arkansas for being a part of this initiative. Um, and today we have two very special guests. So we're going to be discussing uh, prospect visits and how communities can prepare for that. Uh, and we're very lucky to have Bentley Story from the Arkansas Economic Development Commission and Chris Murphy from Intergy Arkansas uh, to talk about it from their perspectives. Um, and uh, so we're going to have them present uh, and then we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. So you can either you know, type your questions in the chat uh, or wait until the end and we'll kind of have uh, this, this open conversation at, at the end. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Bentley and Chris uh, to take it away. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Um, so Chris and I talked and thought it might be good to give a quick overview of the agency. I see a lot of familiar names and, and some uh, not so much. So uh, our agency is part of the executive branch. Our ultimate goal is how do we encourage job creation and how do we provide resources to encourage job creation uh, in the primary sector? So um, all the information you'll see are, are, you know, is focused on primary sectors, meaning um, manufacturing, corporate headquarters, distribution, things like that. Um, the state really doesn't get involved in retail commercial service development. Um, I know that's uh, some for some of you can be an important topic. Um, and, you know, our community development team does a great job uh, helping with that. But uh, we, we don't have a lot of resources for that. The theory is if you get the primary sectors right, it generates enough activity to uh, to create the demand for uh, service sectors, restaurants, uh, uh, car dealers, uh, all, all those different uh retail and service sectors out there. So um, our business development team, we have the house, the project management team. So we work with uh, the private sector. Um, we act as typically as a, a point of contact with a company or consultant that's looking to either expand in Arkansas or create a, 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 a facility. Um, and so we also manage the state incentive programs. Um, so we negotiate those on, on behalf of the Arkansas taxpayers and always try to be good stewards of, of those dollars and invest taxpayer dollars wisely. Um, and then we also help with real estate searches. So uh, as most of you know, we have a database of available properties uh, that actually is supported by our friends at Entergy, uh, ArkansasSiteSelection.com. So um, if you're not familiar with that, I encourage you to take a look at that um, and become uh, very familiar with it. Uh, part of our job is to figure out what companies and consultants need to ask all the right questions to help narrow down uh, what, uh, what sites and buildings in Arkansas meet their needs. So uh, we, don't, we don't direct people, uh, businesses or consultants to a certain community one over another. Um, again, we try to help, help narrow the scope and provide them with all the information they need to, to make their decisions. So um, quick overview of AEDC. Chris, you wanna give a quick overview of, uh, of uh, your group at Entergy? Sure. Um... So again, I'm, I'm Chris Murphy, and um, I have been with uh, Entergy Economic Development for about seven years. I started out in the business retention and expansion position. That's where I got to know a lot of you guys. So Bentley said there's a lot of familiar names and faces there. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of you as well. So three years I was in BRE, and then uh, I moved over to new business development. A lot of you guys might know one of my uh, colleagues, Joe Bailey. Uh, Joe and I work in the new business development sector. Uh, we work under Danny Gaines, who a lot of you all know as well. Uh, we have got a community developer that you all are very familiar with as well, and Tandy White. And um, you are probably fairly familiar with a, a new employee that just came into a, the Energy Economic Development Group. Uh, Catherine Holmstrom has joined us from AEDC. And uh, she is now uh, working in the BRE position. And then we, uh, we have uh, an analyst in uh, Tammy Hickman. And um, 
Anyway, we've got a very storied, long history in economic development working hand in hand with AEDC and with the communities. Uh, everything that Bentley kind of touched on there, uh, we kind of run hand in hand with, and we love to partner uh, with you and, uh, and the state in those instances. Uh, like the state, we typically do not get involved in a lot of the, uh, the retail or smaller type businesses, a lot of it is, is focused on industrial and at least the same, same merit that Bentley expressed there. Once you get a, a large company in that, the, you know, the rest is going to follow. So uh, one of our uh, key programs that we offer to uh, the communities that we serve is the, uh, um, the site certification program. Tandy manages that for us. Joe and I participate a great deal in it. But um, as, as everybody knows, we've got to have product in these instances to even get um, some of these companies in to visit your sites. So uh, we work diligently with the- uh, I am uh, thinking about purchasing- With the communities. And um, um, at any rate, so the, the uh, site selection process and the certified site uh, can definitely uh, improve your capabilities in landing those prospects. So uh, um, outside of that, uh, I think that's that's pretty good for the introductions. And, and uh, if you guys don't have any questions, I think Bentley and I might be able to just jump right into some of the things that we think are really going to be beneficial. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of you as communities already take advantage of some of this. You know how to be successful. Uh, I think we're just hoping that if you take just a couple of things out of this, uh, it's going to make you, uh, uh, it's going to help you elevate your game. So uh, with that, Bentley, you want to roll it over? Yeah, sure. So I'll show share my screen in a second. So um, Chris and I have a couple of different documents we'll share screen with you guys and kind of go through, but um, we'll, we'll share them with Dylan afterwards to, to provide to everybody. But um, you know, something that we kind of developed over the years as, as some uh, successful tips for, for prospect visits, things to think about. Um, and, uh, and so we'll kind of kind of go through through those. So let me see if I can share my screen. OK, so hopefully you guys can can see the, the list there. Top 10, you get a, get a thumbs up from Dylan. OK, good deal. So. Um, you know, as we work with companies and uh, work through the, uh, the, the funnel, so to speak, of, the, of a project, um, you know, the, a site visit can happen just about any time during a, a project. It can happen on the front end where a company uh, may not necessarily send a 30-page request for information. They may say, hey, I'm actually going to be in market. I want to look at these three buildings. Um, that's a little more on the rare side. Typically what happens is, you know, we, we've had some sort of interaction with a company or their representative consultant, and, and we've gone through a lot of information exchange, a lot of phone calls, um, and then we're now to the point where they want to come into the market and uh, look at the community, look at uh, an existing building, look at sites, visit the educational institutions, whatever it may be. All, all site visits have different different goals. Um, of course, during, you know, for the last 18 or so months, uh, we've done a lot of virtual site visits. Um, I think we'll probably see more of, of those because I think people realize that they can probably save, save a little money and time and resources uh, doing some of the initial visits virtually. I think a lot of these, these um, topics here uh, are applicable for virtual site visits as well. I know we've hosted some and our project managers actually would go to the community uh, to be in the same room with the utility, with the, uh, the, whoever controls the site, with the local economic developer, with the, um, the training or educational institutions, um, just to kind of show a unified, unified front. So I will say on, the, um, on the, the virtual side, I think there is some value of uh, not necessarily having everyone at their own desk uh, dialing in, that's fine, but uh, you, know, you could potentially think about, all right, are we comfortable being in the same room? Uh, and presenting uh, as, as one unified team to whoever's on the other end of the line there. So, um, so uh, you know, it's kind of go, should go without saying, but uh, be prepared. Um, you, there's a lot that can be done ahead of time before a site visit. The last thing you want to do is, 
the day of the site visit, start asking questions about uh, the timing of their arrival or, or any, anything. Everything, all T's should be crossed and I's dotted uh, before the site visit. Having said that, uh, things will absolutely change and uh, further down there's one that says you have to be flexible. So keep that in mind, but um, be prepared. Have, have really good maps. I can't express uh, enough how important it is to have good maps. And if you're in an energy territory, I'll, I'll throw, a, uh, throw Chris out there. They have a really uh, great map team that can put together some good looking maps and, and can help with that. Um, so, you know, if, if you don't have the, the ability to do it in-house, uh, tap your utility, uh, tap a, uh, an engineer, tap an architect on your board, uh, whatever the case is. But having really good site information and map information uh, it makes site visits go, go much more smoothly. Um, if you've been through Intergy's select site uh, program, then you know the 50 point criteria. And uh, you know it, it's very nice to say when someone asks you, hey, do you have a phase one on the site? You can either hand them a binder or hand them a jump drive and say, yeah, it's, it's in all the information you need is here. Um, so uh, being prepared is, uh, um, can never be underrated on a site visit. Um, for utilities, have a plan and timing for, for costs if the existing um, utility infrastructure can't serve it. Understand what the timing is um, and, uh, and understand what the cost may be. Chris, I don't know if you want to add in any, any, how important it is to bring you guys in as early as possible when there is someone looking at a site that, that is served by a utility and uh, uh, kind of the timing of what you all have to do to understand you know, whether it can be served, what the cost is, that sort of thing. Yeah, thanks, Bentley. Uh, you, you did mention the, the mapping process. Um, uh, as most of you all know, if you've been involved at all in the uh, uh, site certification, uh, we do provide all of that. But as Bentley has mentioned, if you do not have property that is a certified site or you have gone um, through some of the uh, uh, select site uh, criteria, we still are able to put together, you know, maps for your sites. And uh, as Bentley mentioned, it is, it's critical for the likes of um, Joe or myself to be involved in the early stages to determine what kind of maps you're actually needing. And also to make sure that uh, the site that you're presenting is capable of um, some of the utility services that um, that prospect is going to need. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of you all know, you know, uh, electricity just doesn't happen at some of these sites. It's a, uh, it's a long process, same thing with gas, same thing with water and sewer. So having that detail on the front end is, uh, is critical and it's, uh, it can be time consuming. You're not always going to have, you know, uh, uh, an ability from us to respond in a couple of days. So like Bentley had mentioned, uh, the earlier that you get us involved, the better. And, you know, sometimes we're even involved um, uh, before it actually uh, hits your plate and you decided to submit something. And we might have ideas of what sites, you know, might work. And that, that falls in line with, with what we're talking about. The sooner that we're involved, the better. So thanks, Billy. Yeah, that's a great point, Chris. And kind of with any project, understand what the project drivers are to Chris's point. Uh, there may be a company that's looking for needs a site that needs 300 megawatts of electricity. And I think Chris will be the first one to tell you, yeah, they want to serve 300, but where can they serve it in the state? You know, where is it feasible uh, that, that it's not going to be uh, not going to be cost effective, uh, ineffective? So um, understanding what the project drivers are uh, definitely um, will allow you to, to be more more successful than, than not. So. Um, if you want to do a community tour, I, I think it depends on how long a, a company is in town. Um, we had a site visit last week in a community and, and uh, they, we didn't have a block of time set aside for the community to do an actual tour of the community. So um, in the different places from the airport to the hotel, uh, to the site, uh, back to the meeting room, uh, they were able to actually kind of weave in a little a little bit of the community tour. So, um, but you always wanna be mindful of, of a, a company's time and, and what they want to do. Um, you know, make sure the route's cleaned up. Uh, you know, don't 
make sure you've driven it numerous times. You don't want to get lost uh, if you're doing a tour. Uh, that definitely doesn't look good. And if you can't do a tour, one thing that uh, we've seen work really well is, is have a map with points of interest and have a flip book almost that you can hand to someone that says, look, we're, we weren't able to do a, a community tour. However, here's, here's some information, um, whether it's, you know, you pull out information from different neighborhoods on Zillow of what housing costs are, you show pictures of the healthcare institutions and how many beds they serve and what their specialties are. Uh, you show pictures of other uh, industries in the area. Uh, show other um, infrastructure there, so uh, other points of interest. So uh, you know you can you can set up a virtual uh, uh, community tour uh, as well if you need to. Um, verify the agenda in the first five minutes. Uh, actually, you should verify the agenda um, several days before the visit um, to make sure that you're you're meeting their goals, uh, and then reiterate it on um, on the first five minutes of the visit. Um, you'll, you'll come to find out that if you are not the first community that they are visiting, they'll probably stick with the agenda. I mean, they will not stick with the agenda. If you are the first, they'll stick with it and they'll figure out what went well and what went wrong. And then they'll uh, text or call ahead to the other communities that they're going to visit and say, hey, uh, our client is kind of switched up the agenda. They want to spend more time on this and less on that for whatever reason. So um, you want to verify the agenda on, on the front end to, to make sure you're meeting, uh, meeting their needs. Again, verify the priorities. If, if, if they've been uh, tight-lipped and haven't said much about what, uh, uh, what the project is, what they hope to, uh, to gain from the visit, um, ask them on the front end. After you go through the agenda, hold out five minutes and say, I'd like to turn it over to uh, whomever to, to give us a quick rundown on the project and give us provide any updates that, uh, that we ought to know before we get, uh, get the site visit going. So. Um, that's always, um, I think, acceptable. Uh, and especially if the company, if we know the company is and who their product is, what it is, uh, it gives them an opportunity to, uh, to tell you and be proud of, of what, they're, what they do and what, what kind of impact they want to have in the community. Um, again, we had a site visit uh, a couple of weeks ago where we had a, a company that came in and um, we were actually going to put their product in uh, the gift basket to say, hey, we would like for this product to be manufactured here. We want this to be in every gift basket that we provide to everybody that comes. So we want this to be a new added uh, bonus to the, uh, to the um, gift basket. Uh, ran that by the consultant and they said, actually, you know what? We don't want to steal the company's thunder because they plan on kind of uh, rolling out their plans for the community and for the, um, uh, for the project. And, uh, and we're going to pass around examples of, of the product. And so Instead, why don't you just put a little box in there as, as a placeholder? So, um, you know, any, any of those things that you can do, um, a nice little touch, but it never hurts to run the idea by somebody to make sure uh, you're not stepping on toes or you definitely don't want to steal, steal a company's thunder. So uh, in that instance, the company was very proud of their product. Uh, they wanted to kind of make a big splash and give us the presentation on here's where we are, here's what we want to do in your community. Uh, and so it was a, it was a great visit. Um, as far as, uh, we'll skip down to, to number four, the local team. Um, you know, you wanna confirm on the front end who should participate in the visit. Um, just because um, you've got uh, local elected officials or um, someone that feels they need to be in the meeting even though there's really no value added there. Um, you know, have that conversation with, with the team at the state, with the utility with the, the company directly or with the consultant to uh, really get a good understanding of who should be in the meeting, what the purpose is. Um, numerous site visits we've had where company, companies and consultants have said, at this point, we do not want elected officials um, participating yet. Um, uh, we, just, we just don't, it's not appropriate right now. It will be at appropriate time. Sometimes they say, yeah, uh, we would like to hear a word of support from the mayor or whoever, whoever it is. So have a really good understanding of who should be part of the local team. Um, you know, make sure you've got the technical folks available and, uh, and ready to speak, even if they're not on the visit. 90% um, of the time, a technical question will arise and you'll want to be able to shoot, uh, shoot them a text and say, hey, I know you're not on this visit. Um, I, I've kind of got you on standby. Either can you answer this via text, or if I put you on speakerphone, can you answer the question for me? So um, even if 
uh, people aren't uh, in the room, um, have them have them prepped and ready. Um, uh, have a designated note taker. Uh, this will become apparent as, as we kind of wrap up with a follow up, but um, you'll want to write down every question that they had and make sure you know we're answering it um, with with complete clarity. And if we don't have a clear answer, uh, I don't know. I'll get back to you as an acceptable answer. You never want to make up an answer. Uh, you never want to promise something that you can't deliver on. So if you don't know the answer, you just say, I don't know the, the exact answer. Uh, we're going to write that down and follow up with you. So have somebody uh, in all the meetings making sure that, uh, that, uh, that we're tracking that. Have a pre-meeting um, with, uh, with your team uh, to go through the agenda. Have everyone understand what uh, the purpose of the meeting is, what their role is. Uh, make sure they're put, put the sales cap on. Um, and, and also um, make them understand that they'll need to be flexible. We may run an hour long in a meeting and uh, may have to bump their, their slot back uh, an hour. Um, we had um, a site visit where we had our Department of Environmental Quality uh, drive uh, several hours for a meeting on an afternoon, um, and their time got bumped back a little bit. Uh, and the meeting only lasted about 10 minutes, which was a, actually a good thing. And we, we gave them a heads up. We said, look, if the meeting goes an hour with permitting, we've got issues. Um, we want it to be clear and concise, uh, which it was. Uh, they laid out the permitting process, a few questions exchanged, and, uh, and we wrapped it up and that was it. So, um, you know, go ahead and, and give your, your participants a heads up of, of what the expectation is and uh, just because they're not in every meeting and every meeting doesn't last an hour doesn't mean that they uh, were not valuable. Um, I'll pause there. Uh, Chris, you got anything to, to throw in there? No, I think it, it, it runs really good here, uh, Bentley. A lot of it, the flexibility is key. There's so many times, like you said, that, uh, that we've got to just kind of do things on the fly. And um, so you, you've got to maintain that flexibility throughout. Um, but yeah, it, it looks good. You're, you're going to see a, a lot of overlap in what we are trying to uh, present as a utility as well. But uh, uh, nice stuff. Nothing, nothing big there. Okay. Um, as far as your product, you know, the state, we require, uh, and utilities as well, we're probably, we're, we're, rely on each community to have the product. Um, and so, you know, have sites and buildings ready to go, have the grass mode, have the lights turned on. Uh, be ready to go uh, in inclement weather, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and it, you know, go ahead and prepare your board that uh, we're going to spend some money on a site visit. Um, we've had site visits where people have had to put tents up out in the middle of soybean fields, uh, running generators and uh, um, uh, for a 30 minute visit in the field, but didn't know what the weather was going to hold. So we had to do it. So, um, you know, just just be prepared. Uh, do everything you can on the front end to mitigate any any issues that may arise. Um, uh, you know, know, know your shortcomings and, and be prepared to address them. Uh, you know, I don't think you have to necessarily proactively do that, but uh, know that if they ask a hard question, you should be prepared to um, to answer it uh, truthfully. And uh, and if there are issues, you know, what steps are being taken to mitigate those? So. Um, companies are all, especially, you know, uh, you know, with pandemic and other risks out there that we're unaware of, uh, they want to figure out how do you, how do you mitigate risk? They are looking for the least risky business investment that they can make. And so as you're thinking through, uh, your community, the prospect visit, everything you should be doing is how do we gear, how do we gear it towards proving that we are the least risky choice? It, it, we're going to make it hard for you to say no to us. That that's the goal. Um, have effective uh, communications um, and know if, if you're not the, the best presenter in, in a certain circumstance, find someone that is. Um, uh, the, the company that came in and, and gave us the presentation on, uh, on their product, that sort of thing, um, it was actually the person that, uh, that didn't really say much during the whole visit but actually did a really good job presenting. Didn't have a ton of questions, was not a technical person. Um, before they spoke, we thought they were probably kind of the note taker, didn't know. But clearly this person had the ability to present 
uh, in an effective manner. And so the company said, hey, we want you to go up here and talk about our project and our company uh, and, uh, and was able to relay that in a, in a passionate, uh, confident way. So, you know, we should be doing that, um, uh, the same thing uh, at the local level. Um, um, hey, Bentley, one, yeah. one comment on that is, I know a lot of communities look to their economic developer and say, hey, they should be running the show from the get-go. And I think your point is well taken there. There, there are some of us that are not just real good in a position like that of presenting. And so it, it does behoove all of us, you know, to uh, uh, check ourselves. And if there's somebody else that's better out there, somebody on the team that might be better, you know, than you are as, as a director of something or as a, a manager or whatever the case is, then by all means, you know, utilize their uh, facilitating capabilities as opposed to uh, trying to just, you know, muddle through you know, things. So always be on the lookout for, you know, who, who's the strongest, like Bentley is saying, in, in the group that's going to be there as far as presenting things. And then, of course, same thing goes with your technical people. Who's the strongest, you know, there? Uh, in all cases, it's much better to have quality of knowledge and communication as opposed to quantity. And Bentley had touched on having the mayors, the elected officials, you know, others there. It's, you know, it's not always impressive to that prospect to have all of those people there. As a matter of fact, it might be detrimental. So um, choose, choose your people wisely and, and make sure that it's quality, you know, over the quantity, so. Yep, that's a good, good input, Chris. So um, you'll see here, um, you know, wouldn't necessarily talk about divisive, potentially divisive uh, topics unless they're brought up. Um, and, you know, um, and even then yeah. kind of steer clear of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and here, here's another one that, that has, has rarely happened, but it has, it has happened sometimes. And, um, you know, focus on your community. Uh, you don't want to talk about any other communities, even if you do know where they're looking for whatever reason, just focus on the positives of, of your community. Um, it kind of always leaves a little bit of a bad taste in, in the company's mouth of bad mouthing any other communities, that sort of thing. You never know what kind of connection they may have to it. Um, talk a little bit about this. Don't guess. If you're not sure of an answer, say, I don't know. We'll get back to you. Um, have good workforce data. Um, this is becoming increasingly more important um, with, uh, with workforce shortages. It's, uh, I'm not going to jump into all that. I think everyone knows all the issues we're facing, but have good workforce information, um, have good labor shed studies of where, you, where you're going to pull people from. Um, you know, a lot of what we see now are uh, companies, uh, it's been a typical practice, but more and more so a focus on having conversations with um, existing employers, with existing staffing agencies, and typically those happen on site visits uh, without an economic developer in the room. So back to um, number um, four, the local team, if you do have an HR manager of, a, of an industry that the company wants to speak with just about their uh, take on the local labor market, um, prep that person, have a good relationship with them, know exactly what they're going to say. Um, you, you want them to be part of the economic development team. So uh, a lot of times those happen without the economic developers sitting in them. So um, you want to you want to you want to prep that that HR rep or the staffing agency um, to be honest, but uh, but do it in a in a tactful way that uh, that hopefully will will give some confidence to uh, to the prospect that the, that the workforce is is there. Um, local incentives, um, you know, this is something that you need to understand on the front end. Uh, don't give up something that you haven't asked for, um, and, and this is a big part. Don't make promises you can't keep. Uh, you have to understand what your uh, what your parameters are, what you what you can do and what you can't do, and uh, and be upfront with them. If you know you can't do something, be honest with them. Um, and uh, if you can do something, then all, all the better. So, um, and then finally, takeaways and follow follow ups. Um, you know, do, doing gifts are are fine. You want to be respectful of having something that they can travel with or ship it to them if you uh, if you if you can. Um, have some time at the end of the visit for a recap. Uh, I've been on site visits where the company had to be at the airport at 7 a.m. And so we put in the built in the agenda a 630 
um, breakfast and a 645 uh, recap to, to follow up on the visit. And you, you'll glean a lot of information from those follow-up meeting, from the meeting after the visit. Um, it gives them some time to digest. And, uh, you know, you always want to build in that towards, towards the end of the visit uh, before they leave. So everybody's clear on what the follow-up items are um, and, uh, and what the next steps are. Um, and then follow up. You know, if there are no outstanding issues, follow up and just say, I want to thank you for the time in, in, uh, uh, in our community. And um, after getting to know your company and spending some time, we're even more excited about the potential of you locating here or expanding here. So um, always follow up and, uh, and, and definitely follow up um, if there are outstanding issues. Be clear. Um, you know, strategically, you may want to follow up if you know your uh if you are the Tuesday site visit of a five community tour on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, you may strategically want to wait until Friday um, to either send a follow up or an email or whatever the case may be, a note. Um, so they're actually, you know, receiving communication from you when they're in another community uh, and let them know that you're, you're on top of it. So um, so with that, I'll, again, I'll share this this document. And um, Chris, I don't know, do you want to. Uh, um, let me see if I can st stop sharing here. Um, if you want to go through your document real quick, Dylan, I don't know. I took a, we I took a lot of time. Sorry, Chris. Um, I, I want to be respectful of everybody's time and, um, but Chris. No, no, we're all good. Thank, thank you, Billy. Okay. Yeah, Chris can, uh, go through his, take it. Away. Dylan, everything. All right. See that just fine. Looks good. Okay. So after uh, Bentley's very thorough uh, uh, prospect visit list, I think the, the first thing that I, I want to share in the team at, at Entergy wants to do is um, the list that ADC put together was uh, very thorough, a little bit overwhelming, but there are key components to it that we wanted to highlight almost in a uh, checklist type format. And so, you know, keeping along the same lines and understanding the objective of all of us when we have these, these prospect visits, we want to make sure that, you know, everything is, is very thoughtful and very thorough. And the only way to do that is to maybe take a document similar to what we've crafted here and actually use that as a checklist for all the things that Bentley uh, you know, might have outlined. And so, uh, as you can see, that's, that's pretty much what we have done as a team. And we have got that uh, uh, certainly available to all of those, uh, those communities that we serve and for everybody that's on this, uh, on this call today. But just to highlight some things, just like Bentley had said, you want to get that prospects, you know, priority for the visit. What are they really after? What are they wanting to see? What do they want to know? And this gives you, you know, an actual format where you can list that out. You type this stuff in as an economic developer, you've got it right in front of you and you know exactly, you know, what's going on. So this document, you know, becomes something that you work from and can reference, you know, on a regular basis when you're, uh, when you're preparing. Um, second thing, uh, who have you contacted to participate? That goes back to what you know, uh, what I had said about the uh, the quality of the individual over the quantity. You don't want just a a uh, huge crowd there that's not going to add a whole lot of value. It goes back to what are their priorities, and then uh, use that um, as your guidelines for who has got to be there and, you know, what they're going to say. And then along with that, make sure that you've got a way to communicate with them readily, because it all goes back to the, the flexibility at the end of the day. Uh, like Bentley said, if you're the first one in line, things tend to go a little bit, you know, the, the way that you had planned. But if you're the last one in line, then there's, there's some things that are going to get scratched and some things that are going to get added. So, make sure that you're able to communicate with all those individuals that, uh, that you want, you know, and you can, again, just utilize this format that I'll provide to Dylan and, and you guys can, can use and, and you can, you can change as you go through, but a lot of it hits the very same things. Uh, we've, we've just taken a great document that AEDC has already, you know, put together. So 
Um, you know, and then and going back to the pre-meeting, it's always good to prep, you know, everybody. Make sure that you know what everybody is going to say and make sure that they stick to that agenda. Uh, just like, you know, what, what Bentley had covered. And then you want to make sure that you go ahead and identify those gaps. You don't want to get into the meeting and then be blindsided by something that they had requested that was never brought up. So having that pre-meeting is going to really, you know, bring out a lot of that information that uh, the things you know and the things that you don't. Uh, and it doesn't mean, again, that... Uh, uh, that you have to highlight the things that you don't and certainly does not mean that you need to uh, um, make up something either. Like Bentley had said, just uh, just request the time to uh, find out the answer and get back to them. So, um, you know, another thing that we thought you know, would be useful and, and Bentley kind of highlighted was the, uh, the driving to the location or to the building you need to get a good idea of times and make sure that you're not going to be held up by uh, rail or by stoplights or by, you know, whatever the case is. And uh, along with that, uh, you pretty much know on the front end how much time you've got. Make sure that you've got somebody there. It could be the note taker or it could be another individual that's there uh, just to observe, to make sure that you're keeping, you know, on time and that you're not uh, not taking too much time like Bentley did earlier, but uh, um, anyway, so uh, make sure that you've got that uh, that timekeeper that knows exactly what's going on. And then uh, you've got your designated drivers. You've got somebody that can get them from point A to point B and kind of narrate about your community, um, some of the highlights. You can have those discussions in the car because that's pretty much a uh, wasted time. You're trying to get them to the site and that uh, that time of just uh, transportation can be vital in you, you know, getting that relationship going and uh, getting the story out there that you want to tell about, you know, about the community. Community, And then Bentley highlighted note takers absolutely have to do that in order to make sure that you cover anything at the end of it that you still need to follow up with and, um, you know, just, uh, just make sure that you've, you've hit all the points of interest. Um, maps, it, it, the clean route, it, Bentley mentioned that as well. You know, one thing that I have seen in the past that we need to need to make sure of, he, uh, on that document, it says, you know, mow the areas, uh, make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing. A lot of times there's vegetation around buildings. Uh, there could be vegetation around entrances to sites, things of that nature. Uh, the mowing is great, but make sure that, you know, the trash in the route is okay, it, it picked up, make sure that there's no potholes. If there is, then, you know, tap your uh, uh, your city works or something like that on the shoulder and ask them to kind of fill that stuff in before that actually happens. Your visit actually happens because that, that goes a long way as well. Uh, some of these other things all, all touched upon, um, you know, make sure that you've got uh, the printed list of all the team members that are going to be there. Um, something that I find hit and miss in some of these uh, um, visits is the fact that and name tags are very important. I, I cannot stand going into a uh, into a meeting and somebody speaking and uh, not being introduced to them, not knowing, you know, what what they are within a company and, you know, what their name is so that if I've got a question, I can address them professionally and things of that nature. Uh, if, if you've got individuals that want to wear their company name tag, then have it, you know, have it out there to where it's visible to everybody. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had, I've had questions and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a little bit frustrating and it's got to be frustrating to the, uh, to the prospects as well. So that's something simple, you know, that we can all do. Um, you know, one big thing that, that he also mentioned is, is constructively addressing, you know, the, the shortcomings, whether it be infrastructure, whether you're trying to, uh, to put an industrial customer on a piece of property that is served by a um, single phase line. And uh, we as the uh, servicing utility would have to bring in, you know, a model of three phase or something like that. As long as we explain that, we have a plan of action, um, things of that nature, then uh, that's something worth, you know, explaining. You, you're, you're laying out that it's, 
Uh, it's not an obstacle. Uh, it is just something that is not present right then, but it can, you know, it can easily be addressed. And the same thing with, with education workforce and, and anything like that. So um, again, all, all of these are pretty much highlighting. It is, it really is a format though that was designed for uh, um, what we thought as the utility would assist the communities as a uh, as a real checklist and putting things on there that they could reference, you know, for uh, um, for multiple times even you know even before, and then just you know some some hit or miss things about during the visit, you know, always always try to be as relaxed as possible, uh, you know, be confident in what you're presenting. Um, there is a a myriad of of suggestions here. Went through the you know, from our entire team, just trying to highlight things that, uh, uh, that we felt like would make the experience just uh, as good as possible for those, uh, for those prospects. And then like Bentley said afterwards, the, the follow-up is, is key. Make sure that you follow up at the end with the prospect there to know exactly what their expectation is. And then follow up after uh, the meeting with the group that attended and see if you can come up with, you know, ways to, uh, uh, to improve upon what you presented and see if there's any, you know, comments or things that, that need to follow up, uh, um, you know, a, as a team for the next one. So, um, Dylan, that's, that's about it. Bentley, I, I don't know if there's much that was added to this, but, uh, uh, I think it, it. I think it helps solidify exactly what you presented, and it might be, might be a good tool for uh, um, for the communities to utilize as as a checklist as they go through. But yep, agreed. I'll keep my comments short. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, thank you so much, Chris and Bentley, for these uh, this this advice and these documents that we will be sharing um, afterwards. Um, so. Uh, if you're taking notes, we, we will have these um, be, be sent out afterwards along with the recording of this meeting. Um, and with that, I wanted to open this up to um, everyone to, to ask any questions you may have of Bentley and Chris. Um, and you can either just unmute yourself or type it in the chat, which, whichever works for you best. But I see Dr. Michael Yoder just unmuted, so I think he might have a question. <laughs> you know me well. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bentley, earlier in your talk, you were saying like, don't, don't bad mouth other communities. What about the opposite? Like to, to what extent do you find that com a community should emphasize the positive benefits of other communities in the area? Like I'm thinking, say, just hypothetically, let's say the city of hope wanted to bring somebody in. Well, they may want to talk about, say, Texarkana and what Texarkana has to offer, or Harrison might even want to talk about, heaven forbid, Springfield. You know, the Springfield is probably the closest airport, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, in, in today's, uh, not just normal amenities, but work, workforce and labor shed as well, you, you have to reach out that far um, and, and do that sort of thing. So. No, I think, um, you know, a regional approach is, is always going to uh, position your community better than, than, uh, than, than not. So, and even so, to your Hope and Texarkana point, um, you know, whatever happens in Hope benefits Texarkana and vice versa as well. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's benefit across the board. So, yeah, you know, it, it shouldn't be viewed as a, a a competition more of a of a partnership you know in, in in with proximity that way so um uh now I, you know i, I don't want to discourage communities from uh you know from discussing what their tax structure may be um compared to like a national average or a state average or something like that i mean you gotta you gotta promote your uh you know what you can so uh but you know stopping short of um, oh yeah, I was in I was in that community uh, last week and um, I saw the gas station get robbed or uh, there was a you know uh, traffic was horrendous. I'll never go back. That that sort of thing as well. But yeah, it's a very good point. Chris, did you have anything to add to that? 
No, I, I agree 100%. Um, it, it's always, uh, when you're talking about your workforce and your labor, like Bentley had said, it really becomes more of a regional because of the way um, Arkansas is. I mean, we pull a lot of a lot of labor, you know, from 45 miles out and so on. So um, you're going to have to really, really look at it from a regional standpoint when you talk about that. But I would, uh, like Bentley also said, I wouldn't talk about the community having having higher crime rates or anything, you know, of that nature. Stick to the positive. All right, great question. Um, and any other questions from from the audience? Again, you can just unmute yourself or uh, type it in the chat. And we have one question in the chat from Nicole. Uh, what is an example of the worst prospect visit you have seen? Um, so maybe maybe a what not to do. Um, if either Bentley or Chris want to take one of that. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, an example of a uh, um, a building that um, was uh, put on a tour. Um, and it was not the first choice of, of any, uh, let's just say, professional economic developer. Um, but there were some people that thought that that building need to be, needed to be shown and had to be shown. Um, was not on the market uh, for very good reason. It was empty for 15, 20 plus years. The company that owned it was not actively marketing it. However, <laughs> um, for certain reasons, we, we looked at, had to go see the building. Um, I've never... Um, I've never gotten nauseous um, actually walking into and out of a building, but in this building, it was bad. I mean, uh, we had flashlights uh, and we had to have people around uh, shining flashlights on potholes so no one would step in them inside the building. The only light in the building was uh, sunlight coming through the roof uh, in hole from holes from the roof and um, and. Uh, and flashlights that we had. So it was, um, it was an experience. It was a, I would call that situation an anomaly, I hope. Um, but, um, you know, uh, unfortunately we did tour the building. Um, it was just a, a, not a good situation all around. It was, uh, um, yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't good. So another example I'll give is, uh, there was, uh, uh, this was years ago, there was uh, um, an individual that uh, did not know exactly what, uh, what was, I think knew what the company prospect was, but uh, they didn't fully comprehend all the products that this company produced. Um, and I'll keep it very generic. Uh, I don't think anyone on this call probably knows who this person is. Maybe uh, maybe, maybe a few, few of the old timers uh, like myself do, but um, no longer in, in economic development, no longer in Arkansas, but um, had issues with um, uh, someone becoming ill from a product that uh, this company made and was talking about the reason they were late to dinner was because they were having to deal with this and use some very choice words to describe um, a certain product. And lo and behold, the company um, actually produced that product and they said, oh, that's one of our products uh, that this person was bad mouthing. So, you know, it's okay to be personable and on that sort of thing, but, you know, just always keep it positive. Um, you know, um, you never want to bad mouth anything because you never know who's sitting on the other side of the table. So uh, hopefully I kept it generic enough, but uh, anyway. Uh, Bentley, I'd like to carry over from that. I, I think, uh, Steering clear of the the worst, I would say just a general comment is that uh, I have been in meetings where there has been a, a lot of what uh, uh, when we talk, when I talk to my kids or something like that, I'll say stop, you know, cutting up or stop. Um, I've been on visits where uh, our Kansans are very social and they want to, you know, high five a buddy or they want to, you know, fist pump or something like that when they're there and they're in the crowd as part of, you know, the, the, the quality uh, representative for the area or something like that. And then they start talking over 
you know, others, you might hear them talking about the game going on or something, you know, to that effect. And I, I just would um, emphasize to everyone that those settings, like you were saying a second ago, are professional situations. And there's plenty of time after the fact, you know, to have the, uh, uh, hey, how was your weekend, you know, and, and all this, this type of stuff. But I, I've seen, you know, prospects look over their shoulder at others that are being just a little bit too loud or they're, you know, really not paying attention to the conversation. They're busy catching up on, you know, what's happened over the weekend. So my, my advice there would be in that short window that you've got, keep it professional. If there's an opportunity to have some type of social interaction with the prospect or with someone else, then you, uh, you keep it down and you don't, you know, you be mindful that there's, there's truly professional things going on there that could make or break the community sealing a deal. All right. Great stories. What not to do. Uh, so stay away from that, that activity. Um, so uh, here's a question from Dr. Yoder again. So how do y'all measure labor sheds? Yeah. So Chris, I'll take a quick stab at it. Um, it you know, honestly, it, it just depends. I think pay rate um, will help define that and, and where we are in the state. Um, uh, got a good example that uh, I saw, I think Danny's on the call and he'll remember, but we had a community that um, needed to show what the labor shed looked like. So they commissioned a third party uh, to do a telephone uh, uh, survey of people in a certain radius saying, um, would you drive 30 miles for $16 an hour? Would you drive 45 miles for $20 an hour? Um, and, uh, I mean, it was a, it was a great, uh, data point to provide to the company that's, I mean, it's raw, it's real data. It says, here's, here's the population in this, in this, uh, in this area and X percent of them that will drive X miles for X wage. Um, you know, zip code studies, I think are very valuable too. If you can get your existing industries to participate in a zip code study, um, that actually is uh, not what someone's willing to tell you to, or, or telling they're willing to do, but something that they actually do. So, um, you know, if you can't do an actual zip code study, doing a, a phone survey is, is extremely helpful. Hiring a, a, a company to do a, a formal labor shed study, spending the money on it, doing it internally. We've got some great communities around the state that do a, a labor shed wage study um, annually, um, really good data, but um, I, I, you know, in my mind, it's really tough to beat a zip code study from existing industries, just because, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to know names, you don't have to know anything, uh, you just shows you where people live and how far they're willing to drive. Great questions, and I think we have time for maybe one more question, so I'm going to throw it out to the, the audience again, you can either unmute or just put it in the chat. All right. Well, it looks like looks like we're good to go. Uh, and like like I said, I'm going to uh, send out the documents and the recording of this after the fact. And before we go, I did want to ask you guys uh, if you're comfortable, uh, turn your cameras on. Uh, we like to have uh, kind of a group photo on here. So I'm going to take a screenshot here in a second. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to give you guys some time to yeah freshen up, fix your hair, you know, turn your camera. Um, and I just got a Mac, so I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do a screenshot on this. So let's see. Should come in three. Okay. All right. And on the count of three, one, two, three. Oh, hold on. Let's do that again. One, two, three. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for being a part of this. Uh, and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Our, our next one is about website audits. Uh, we're going to hear from Thrive based out of Helena, West Helena, on how you can make your um, website for your organization or community uh, more effective uh, to, to serve uh, your stakeholders. So uh, thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks.